Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. So Julie, I was just telling you about the uh, information about the new average mortgage balance in the United States is now mm-hmm. $453,000. Yeah, that is really astounding. It's unbelievable. And you and I were uh, guessing, predicting really, that based on last year's sale price, by the end of this year, the average sale price would be close to five hundred grand, four hundred seventy-five thousand. Mm-hmm. Yep. And here we are. That's sale price, right? You Correct. and I weren't yep. saying mortgage balance. We we're saying <laughs> sale, sale price. price by the mm-hmm. end of twenty twenty-two would be four seventy-five. Well, we were so wrong, mm-hmm. okay? Because the average uh, mortgage amount is four hundred fifty-three thousand. Already nearly that high, yeah. Right. So if you figure it's four hundred fifty-three thousand, that's mortgage amount. Meaning most people have put down. I would venture a guess at least five, maybe ten percent. Right. So you're already looking at an, an effectively what we are predicting to happen at the end of this year is happening mm-hmm. now. I know it'll be amazing to see where we end up. Yeah, it will. It's incredible, actually. If you guys hear any noise in the background, by the way, it's our French bulldog, uh, Maximus, who decided he wants to office crash with us today. He gets very depressed when Zoe (laughs) goes to school. He gets so sad. (laughs) He's like Velcro to us because he misses his girl. So if you guys hear noises in the background, that's what it is. So forgive uh, Maximus. Yes. And, you know, speaking of housing prices and interest rates going up and stuff like that, I did see a a great post uh, by an agent that did put on their social media And they said, you know, don't worry so much about rates going up a little bit if you're renting, because when you make a rent payment, you're paying 100% interest. (laughs) That's a really good point. So just to kind of reset the mindset a little bit. Let's um, remind them this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. And today we're going to be talking about uh, part two of Real Estate Agents, Do You Want Success Now? And we'll get to uh, point number five here in a second. But you just brought up something it's worth drilling down on. So um, this is the little this this is a confusing thought, but this is really the bottom line. What if today's prices of everything, and this is, Julie and I started saying this to you guys last year, but I run into people constantly that are expecting some sort of bubble to burst. Um, You know, it's a bubble, everything economy, real estate's in a bubble, used cars are in a bubble, everything's in a bubble. Mm -hmm. What if it's, what if that's not actually the case? So let me just say this. No one knows what the hell is going to happen next and acting like you do is just basically, you know, People throwing spitballs. Yeah. But this time is not just like last time. There is no direct comparison. Exactly. So the expectation that prices are going to fall in real estate or anything else is probably going to result in a lot of people being very disappointed. But what's really bizarre to think about, and Julie and I actually have been studying inflation even more so, and we get really um, – we totally nerd out on this. Like Julie and I were discovering there was massive inflation – that was uh, in the Roman Empire, towards Mm -hmm. the end of the Roman Empire, actually. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking to yourself, because you're all smart, and you know that, well, the Romans didn't use paper currency. They used gold and silver, mostly silver. So how could there possibly be inflation? Inflation happens a lot of times, basically, from obviously rising prices, but rising prices because there's too much liquidity, which is a fancy way of saying people have too much money, which is, again, obvious when you look at all the prices of things. That's demand. Prices increase from, you know, demand and it's sort of basic common sense type things. But how did it happen in the Roman Empire? Get this. So what they would do is they would, uh, the Roman Empire, would uh, uh, silver coins, again, was the currency that pretty much everybody used. Gold was reserved for very special purchases, larger purchases. They started faking silver coins. That's the best way of saying yeah. it. And, and they would know how their metallurgists, I think I'm saying all this right, would know how to essentially put a silver coating on what was essentially scrap metal. It was and basically a silver-plated piece of some other sort of metal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and that's kind of extraordinary to think. So even well, back— they were printing money, essentially. They were. They were printing money. Mm-hmm. They were essentially debasing their, their money. Their version creating of printing. More, creating more— Well, it's because the government had enormous—and uh, this is the Roman government, right? Had enormous bills to pay. They had a huge uh, military-expanding planet Earth. And you just thought everything, you know, sounds familiar, doesn't it? And they couldn't pay the bills. They couldn't tax their way to uh, make ends meet. And their, the expenses were increasing. And so they couldn't print money like what we're doing now or what now supposedly is going to stop happening at such a high level. But frankly, I don't think that's going to happen either. 
So, you know, what happened is inflation crept in. And when inflation crept in, and this happened, and this has happened all, you know, if you move, you know, march forward in time, when there's been a been big inflationary, you know, call it about like what we're experiencing now, outside of uh, Germany, where there was a collapse after that, you know, the Weimar, 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 Weimar Re Republic. Yeah, Republic, right, which everyone cites, you know, the pictures of the wheelbarrow for old money. Those are all pictures yeah. of when the German uh, currency failed. That was, again, from inflation becoming hyperinflation. No, very unlikely to happen in the United States. I haven't even the biggest bears uh, that uh, Julie and I tune into. They're not even predicting something that extreme. But what is going to most likely happen, and again, nobody knows what the hell is going to happen next, are the new prices or the prices where things are settling are the new are the new base prices. So everything is going to get more expensive. Now, eventually, over time, things will get cheaper again, but not like you think and not in a time frame in which you even want to maybe wrap your mind around. Like energy is going to get cheaper eventually. You know, obviously, technological things get cheaper over time as it becomes cheaper to make. But I'm talking about your food, staples. I'm talking about day-to-day -day stuff. Day-to-day -day stuff. Inflation is going to cause real estate to continue to rise in prices. So here's something. What is it, the owner's equivalent in rent or something? Mm -hmm. So when they're trying to figure out what the inflation rate is, um, the biggest expense that most people have is what they pay for housing, either in a rent and a mortgage or whatever. Um, and I was listening to a great uh, podcast the other day by our friend Peter Schiff, mm -hmm. and he was talking about the greatest, so the greatest percent, in some cases 30% or so, of anyone's monthly income it goes to paying their housing expense. But, and the housing rents, Julie and I have a bunch of rental properties, a lot of you guys do too, rents have been going up. Now, rents aren't just going up because, you know, we're greedy and we're just trying to, you know, take advantage of our tenants. They're going up because the expense of owning the property has gone up uh, in terms of property taxes and all the associated expenses with owning a property mm -hmm. have increased significantly, like massively in just the past 24 months. So the rent has to go up, right? That's the reason it costs and prices go up across the board. But when they're trying to figure out what the inflation rate is, they don't actually take into consideration the actual inflation or real estate agents will call it appreciation in real estate. So uh, what was it? Goldman Sachs last year said that there was going to be inflation in real estate by 16% by the end of this year. So that's where Julie and I were doing our math and we uh, surmised that the average sale price by the end of the year in the United States would be 475000 Well, guess what? It's February and the average sale price, it seems, based on this new report that's on CNBC, the average mortgage amount is 453000 which tells us that the average sale price is already $500,000. Mm -hmm. Now, that was Goldman Sachs. Uh, predicting based on, you know, this happened in fourth quarter of last year, their prediction, 16% appreciation by the end of 2022. We've already seen what it would s seem like at least 10, maybe even 15, who knows what depending percent. Depending on your market, yeah. Right, depending on your market. Inflation or, again, appreciation, if you guys want to call it that, because um, it kind of is both, uh, in real estate, and it's only February. Now, when they're talking about what the inflation rate is, here's the bugaboo of all this, which I find – uh, honestly, I find it amazing. Um, the bugaboo is is that when they're figuring out what the inflation rate is in the United States, they're not taking into consideration the fact that your actual housing cost has inflated uh, to purchase a house by you know double digits, but your rent has also increased by double mm -hmm. digits. But when they're figuring out what the inflation rate is, they're they're watching certain things, but they're not watching what amounts to be your largest single expense, which is your housing bill. They have something called owner's equivalent of rent. And Peter talked about this on his show, and I still cannot even fathom that this is real. <laughs> you know, it's okay. so stupid. It is so stupid. So what they do, what they do, right, what the government does to figure out what the owner's equivalent of rent is, and then they that figures into the inflation rate, is they call and survey homeowners and ask, I'm not making this up, Google it yourself, and <laughs> ask homeowners what they would pay per month or what they would pay for their house, right? Yeah. So it's like if you got a call, hey, Bob, this is, you know, I'm figuring out the inf inflation rate, you know, dot com, and we're trying to, um, you know, help you, uh, we're asking you to contribute, and we're doing something called owner's equivalent of rent. What would you pay per month if you were renting your house, right? That's the question. And whatever that person says, that's how they go about ascertaining what the inflation rate is in real estate. Based on absolutely nothing, total guesstimate. I mean, I can just imagine calling like, I don't know, 
you, Zoe answers the phone, and they and because she likes to answer questions, she she'll be like, oh, I don't know, hundred dollars. You can't make it up though. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? You're telling me people, property owners, know anything about real estate? Know what their house would cost? They even rent? know what their house is worth. Most of them. I and, and most of them are going to Zillow now. They really don't know what their house is worth when they right. do their Z estimates. I know. But you guys get the insanity of all this. So here's a little wake up call. Look at what the average mortgage balance is. If the average mm-hmm. mortgage amount that people are taking out is what it is, then you know damn sure that the actual inflation rate happening in our United, in, in our country and, and a lot of other um, you know Western countries is double digits. Yeah. That's never happened before in the history of history. Now you're going to see there's been a whole bunch of uh, manufacturing people that make everything. They've been holding back on rising, um, raising, raising their prices. prices. There has not been like there's not been a first domino to fall where you saw like all of a sudden um, it, you won't see, for example, car price car prices thus far have not been dramatically increased, but they will because what's going to happen is they won't have a choice but to dramatically increase their prices. Most manufacturers of everything have practiced something called just in time. Well, and this is a, a, a manufacturing concept that came all the way. It was it developed in Japan, actually. And it was uh, made popular in the 80s. You guys don't care. Sorry. I'll reel myself in. <laughs> Julie's giving me a look. But the reality of it is, is that what it means is that you don't warehouse uh, the materials that you're going to be using to make stuff. You buy it, you know, just in time. When the order comes in, then you order it. And then basically it's there. So if you've got a bunch of pending orders and they were based on, uh, you know, last year's prices. And now those uh, raw materials are coming um, into your facility. You're going to have to increase prices most likely on the orders that are already pending if you can. And you probably can't because you're in contract. That means that the next they're going to have double digit price increases across the board. But you're also seeing manufacturers do things where they're changing quantities of things. Notice, I mean, Julie and I always have a diet can of Coke uh, in front of us when we're doing the podcast pretty much all the time. I actually. think these used to be 12 ounce. These are 10 ounce now. Yeah. So that's what they're doing. They're changing. They're changing everything. They're changing the quantity of product that they mm-hmm. make. They're just doing all kinds of different things. They're changing the shapes of the products because, you know, Coca-Cola is doing their best not to raise prices because people will notice it. So they're going to change the quantity of Coke that they give you. They're going to change the quantity of everything that they, you know, everything. Now you're going to start seeing other uh, service providers because they have to raise prices. Look at what builders are doing. To well, keep it practical to real estate, right? Right, but I was I was Just, circling around yeah. about that. Yeah, building prices, people, you know, the builders have. Uh, there was an article yesterday actually mm-hmm. that I sent to you. Mm-hmm. I think building prices have gone up nineteen percent year mm-hmm. over year. But it's not just the price of lumber that everyone belabored till the end of well, it's you know appliances, especially high end appliances. It's appliances. It's labor. So yep. here's really what the takeaway of my little diatribe was. Hopefully, I didn't bore all of you. Um, is that prices are going to settle at this new normal. Don't fight it. Don't expect there to be a, a bubble that's going to burst. There might be little bubbles that burst here and there. But like, for example, uh, people are saying, well, there's a big bubble in used cars because used cars are now at just, they've at, um, what, 14%? For, 45% year over year. Yeah, so everything's gone up in price. Yeah. It's because if you want to order a new car, depending on what kind of car it is, you're going to have to wait probably a year to get the thing. And that's across the board. You And I'm not talking fancy stuff either. I'm talking about normal things. You can't get normal things. Golf carts we've experienced. you, you got to wait. Like if you want to order a golf cart, unless it's some one of these you know, El Cheapo things that are made in China that you know are sitting in warehouses because nobody wants, but now they're starting to sell even stuff like that. But a decent whatever is going to take you six months to 12 months to get. And the price is going to be up substantially. The car you bought, just staying on that as an example, two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago, is worth what you paid for it. That is called inflation. That is something none of us have ever experienced in our lifetimes. And it's honestly, guys, fortunately or unfortunately, it's just getting started. Why do I say it's just getting started? Because the manufacturers of things haven't started noticeably raising their prices. They're doing everything they can, hoping and praying that the inflation ebbs, but it's not going to, most likely. So you're going to see increasing prices, and that's going to have an effect across the board. Good thing for you, you're in real estate, because your average commission is going to increase. This is the only bright side of all this. Your average commission is going to increase because the sale price of your average home is also going to increase. So go you. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there are very few jobs that are like that, right? So you're getting an inadvertent way, uh, increase in your wages, so to speak. You know, just because. So that's a good thing for all of you guys. Now, let's bring this back to the practical, tactical 
Real estate agents, do you want success now? Of course you do. Nobody's ever said, I want it to take longer. I want success now. And so this really boils down to however many points we ended well, up Well, this is with. part two, right? This is part two. So get caught up with points one through four from yesterday. And by the way, one of the things you have to be having uh, by your side when you're listening to this series, otherwise you're not going to understand sort of the vernacular that we use, is you definitely want to download the real estate treasure map. The real estate treasure map is your fill in the blank business and life plan. So absolutely positively have that nearby. We went through a lot of the basics of uh, the real estate treasure map and the mindset stuff mm -hmm. that you have to work on yesterday. If you want the real estate treasure map, which of course you do, it's updated for 2022 and 23 and 24. Go ahead and just text the word Harris, our last name, Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S to 47372. 47372. Text it, uh, the word Harris to 47372. Go ahead and do that now if you've not done it already. Text the word Harris to 47372. This is perfect for new agents. It's perfect for seasoned grizzled veteran agents. You've got to have a treasure map. Not having your treasure map, which is your fill in the blank business and life plan completed, especially at this point in the year, is similar to you deciding that you're going to all of a sudden drive across the country without a map and no GPS. It's asinine. Why would you want to do that? The whole point of the treasure app is to give you that overwhelming, wonderful sense of direction and purpose. So absolutely get it downloaded. Text the word Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S to 47372. And remember, message and data rates may apply. So this podcast series is really drilling down on what are the specific things that will make you get to your success faster. So some of these are very specific some uh, to your mindset, and some of them are, you know, the actual work of real estate. So again, get caught up one through four yesterday. Point number five, show gratitude overtly to those you care about and start your day out right by saying, I love you and giving hugs and kisses to your family. And you know, I was thinking about this point this morning because I knew this was where we we're going to start the podcast. And, and you and I are such in the habit that even Max, our dog, comes up for a hug in the morning. He does. But it, I think it's a great way to start your morning. Okay, so that's something everybody can do. So point number six, here's the work part of it. Remember, guys, if you didn't listen to part one yesterday, this, these points are going to seem a little bit out of context. So make sure you listen to part one. Julie said in her notes, saying, I love you and showing appreciation towards those that you love and care about. That doesn't mean that as soon as you walk out your front door, you're going to start kicking people in the shins. You know, <laughs> just remember. Right. Okay, point number exactly. six. Exactly. Okay, point number six. Here's where the rubber meets the road, guys. These are daily minimum standards that everyone can do. Set a new pre-qualified appointment before noon every workday, ideally with sellers. You can't do this if you're not following point number four from yesterday, which is furiously fast lead follow-up, but this keeps you in proactive lead generation mode during the workday. This is where you've got to come to terms with the fact that your number one job when you are a real estate professional, when you are paying your bills from your real estate practice, your number one job is to generate new qualified appointments every single day. And I always say before noon because you have other things going on and there's going to be stuff that comes unglued. When you've set a new appointment, now, you know, we talk in coaching about what does a new qualified appointment mean? It could be the appointment before the real listing appointment to get to know you, to stage the house, to look at it, to do some comps, whatever. So if, it, this, yes, go if ahead. this is your last podcast or your first podcast you're listening to, remember in real estate, it comes down to, uh, these are the essentially the elements of you being successful long-term. Yes. Number one, you have to be a proactive lead generator. Number two, you have to be a very good pre-qualifier. And number three, you have to be a great presenter. You have to be a great negotiator is number four. Um, and then obviously you want to have some really aggressive uh, lead follow-up. But if you really only can choose three things to be good at, it's going to be proactive lead generation, qualifying, and presenting. Um, in this marketplace, if those are the three things that you are deciding that you're going to be the best at, better than anyone ever has been before, then you're going to win. And you that means you can stop thinking about a lot of the other things that are occupying your you know, your energy and your angst, you can just completely forget about doing them. They're not important. Uh, but every single day, you need to start the day with proactive lead generation, uh, very, very thorough pre-qualifying, and then presenting. The more of that you do consistently, the more money you will make consistently. And this is so incredibly important. Spend all your best energies, which to Julie's point are almost always in the morning, um, 
going after sellers. You have got to stop the cycle of buying buyer leads. I promise you guys more than ever before, and we've been telling you not to buy buyer leads for years, but more than ever before, the buying buyer leads business is going to be an absolute train wreck of real estate careers, and especially now that Zillow has decided they're going to double down again on selling mm -hmm. buyer leads to agents. Do you think that's going to improve the quality of the buyer leads you guys get, or it's going to make it crappier? And they're charging 35%. So if you're a buyer's agent right now, and, and your name is Bob. Of course. And you're someplace <laughs> in you know Bobsville, right? You come from a long line of Bob's in Bobsville, mm -hmm. and you are selling a house for $500,000. Yep. And let's say it's one of these markets where, the, and I'm just going to make up an arbitrary commission amount, okay? But let's say you're in one of these markets where the commission is now on the buyer agent side, an average of, say, 2%, mm -hmm. okay? And now you have a 35% referral fee. Right, and we haven't even talked about paying your broker yet. Exactly. So Bob is going to sell that $500,000 house, which is going to be a $10,000 commission, after he pays the 35% referral fee and after he pays his broker, Bob would have been better off maybe being a Walmart greeter in terms of what he actually got paid. That assumes that Bob has the ability to compete on the buyer side and actually won. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that, <laughs> you know, so that, it's a lot of lather, rinse, repeat there. And remember, Bob was paying for that lead to begin with. Bob was not just paying with his money, but he was paying with his time, where what he could That's have right. and should have been doing is improving his skill set to go after sellers. You have got to stop buying buyer leads. Buying buyer leads or doing any of this passive lead generation stuff that you guys have normalized in the industry is akin to building a mansion or building your house, whatever you're more comfortable with, <laughs> on property you do not own. You build this big, beautiful house, you build this big, beautiful business, and then all of a sudden, the whoever owns rules the land change. decides to change the rules and, and your big, beautiful property becomes theirs. That's what happens when you build your business on essentially uh, platforms that you don't control. Don't buy leads, be a proactive lead generator. Point number seven. Point number seven, you might ask yourself, how am I going to be setting those appointments before noon every workday? Well, here we are. Visit slash door knock one unrepresented seller every day with your pre-listing package, otherwise known as for sale by owners. We like to call them unrepresented sellers because that's what they really are. They have their help wanted sign in their yard with their phone number. Another thing you guys like to complain about, can't find phone numbers. You sell homes for a living. It makes sense that you're speaking with the obvious listing leads. They literally have their hand in the air with their phone number. Now, agents will say, well, it's a hot seller's market, Tim. They're going to sell on their own. Maybe some of them do. But after two weeks, almost every for sale by owner has lost their will to do it on their own. Yes, and that statistically is true. Most FISBOs end up listing. So how did Julie and I sell over 100 houses our first year in business in our early 20s? When we looked like we were 14, here's the answer. <laughs> we did exactly what Julie just said. We went after for sale by owners. For sale by owners were most of what we did. We would, and there were tons of for sale by owners, and it was a real, actually a very strong market because it was mostly this first time home buyer uh, yeah. market. Most, if not all, the for sale by owners were going to move up to another house that they wanted to purchase. Oh, you mean they were a buyer lead that you didn't have to pay for? You guys get the point. And these FISBOs, we didn't know what the hell we were saying. We didn't have a coach. There was no internet. There was no training. But we knew statistically, well, here's all we had to know. That's a house for sale. There's the phone number. There's a door. You know, I'm sure that I can sell that house. If I don't have a buy already, I can find one. That person wants to do at least one or two transactions. I'm going to make that happen. And yet, agents nowadays drive past for sale by owners. Or they'll argue with you that there aren't any. Exactly. Now, I'll tell you this. We teach you in the coaching program, what, 20 different ways to yep. generate listing leads. I would say 18 of them don't cost you anything. Correct. It does take you, uh, you do have to have a skill set and you have to have the mindset to apply that skill set. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be, you know, beholden to buying buyer leads the rest of your life. You're never going to have a real business. So this knocking on a door, this making a phone call to a for sale by owner should be real estate 101, but nobody's telling you guys to do it. But Julie and I, this is a very basic tenant. It doesn't it make sense. How much money would you, if I walked in front of you right now, well, hell, I know there's somebody probably emailing you right now, right? Hey, Bob, I have got a listing lead in your neighborhood. And the seller is asking $549,000. They're willing to work for an agent, uh, willing to work with an agent. How much will you pay me for that lead? Who listening to us right now, the tens of thousands of you, wouldn't pay 25%? All of you would. Oh, at least. Okay, at all least. of them would. Yes. Who wouldn't pay 35%? Oh, and by the way, that person's also going to buy. 35%. Most of your hands are still in the air. 40%. Okay, I just upped it a lot. Yep. Most of your hands, 50%. Who would pay me 50% <laughs> for that lead? 
Now maybe half the hands drop, but there's still half the room has their hands up. I could even increase that, couldn't I? I could start going 60% and there's still going to be people to say, I can go all the way to an 80% referral fee for that listing. And I promise you, there'll still be somebody that'll happily take it and get it sold. Yep. Now that is the definition of insanity because that lead is free and it's in your neighborhood. Why the hell aren't you calling them? Because you don't know what to say and you don't know how to say it. That's the reason you need to join our coaching program. Text the word PREMIER to 47372 and we'll text you back a link to join the PREMIER coaching program. It is the quickest, simplest way for you to move forward in your real estate business. Text the word PREMIER to 47372. We'll text you back a link to join our coaching program. And that is the way for you to skip the line. You can, uh, that'll just take you right to the page. You can join Premier Coaching for around $100 a month. Remember, message and data rates may apply. Text the word Premier to 47372. Speaking of no brainer ways to generate money now. Related to our previous point of people who have their hand raised, point number eight, visit slash door knock. One expired seller listing per day with your pre-listing package. Not only have they self-identified that they wish to sell, they also have shown their willingness to list, which makes them slightly more interesting than a for sale by owner, perhaps. Again, speak with people who obviously could use your help. Well, define Ex what you just said. Okay. They have a, a nice thing about an expired is you know what the price isn't. So, I mean, market frank tested price. Frankly, in this marketplace, it's probably you're not going to be a price issue. It'll probably be a condition or maybe the seller wasn't motivated, didn't allow showings, who knows what. Uh, and True. But you also know that they're willing to pay a commission because it was listed before. That mm -hmm. was Julie's point there with regards to the commission right. thing. E exactly. Now, some of you will claim that you don't have any expireds. How could something expire in today's market? While there is still aspirational pricing, sometimes it's still price. It can also be very limited showing opportunity. Some agents have gotten so lazy that they have terrible, terrible pictures of stupid little iPhone pictures. Mm -hmm. Terrible or description, videos, videos. It doesn't work. The link doesn't work. Nobody is, it's not able to be shown easily. There's lots of different reasons, but yes, of course, things expire in every market. But yes, there may be fewer in the one zip code that you're searching. So expand the geographic area that you're looking in for expired leads and go back further in time. Well, so going back further in time was the point of the day here. If you go back to the listings that came off the market starting in the end of October of last year through now, you're going to see, especially if you're in a snowy climate like where Julie and I are from, yep. a ton of people who would took, you know, withdrew or let their, uh, their listings expired who all have plans to relist their house in the spring. That's right. We teach you what to say and how to say it. All of those guys would be welcoming an alternative to the agent who did not get it sold last time. Because remember, Mr. Seller, um, I appreciate the fact that you were considering keeping the house with your old agent. But what do you think that agent's going to be doing differently this time that they hadn't already tried the first time they had the property for sale? Mr. Seller, you'll probably agree at this point it just makes sense that I pop by at your convenience, say today at 5 o'clock, and I can show you exactly what I can do to get the home sold. And guess what? You can use that information that I'm going to share, uh, share with you and keep it with the old agent, or maybe you decide to move forward with me. So it's 5 o'clock or 5.30 better for you. And they will always say yes. They Virtually will. always say yes. Because so you're offering to give will. them free information that they can then use for the, you know, passing back to the previous agent. But the reality of it is, is if you call them, most of them will list with you because the old agent it hasn't get, even called them back. Hasn't called them back. Take the listing for granted. They kind of already, you know, that previous, well, I always called them old, but that old <laughs> agent is going to have already shown their best hand the first time they had it actively for sale. So that seller's kind of been up mountain, the mountain and down the mountain again with that other agent. You can slide right in there and get the property sold. And That's guess it. what? Mr. Seller, I got some great news for you. And this also pertains to FISBOs too, you know, unrepresented owners. Mr. Seller, and this is, I'm going to give you guys a little FISBO script, okay? So Mr. F Mr. Seller, listen, this is not at the top of the script. This is about maybe a quarter into it. Mr. Seller, listen, I really appreciate the fact I really appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, you've got this house priced right. You have it conditioned right. Everything about this property is perfect. And truthfully, Mr. Seller, in this market, I'm positive you can get this property sold yourself. But let me ask you a question. If I pop by, if I were to swing by with a buyer that wanted to purchase the house at your price, and you didn't have to hassle with the inspections, the appraisals, you didn't have to hassle with any of the things necessary, any of the legal obligations, any of all the different ancillary service providers, and all that other Mickey Mouse, and the check I hand you at closing is more, and I can prove it, then you'll be able to get selling it yourself. Mr. Seller, I'm not saying you can't sell it yourself. I'm sure you can. But if listing with me means I take care of all the hassle, 
and you make more money. Mr. Seller, why wouldn't you list the house with me? And guys, you can do that because most for sale by owners aren't priced correctly. They're actually underpriced. And most expireds are also underpriced too. And they're thinking about relisting at the previous price last year. Do you guys see with a little bit of skill how you can be really moving the ball down the field quicker in your real estate businesses and make a lot more money helping a lot more people? It's not that complicated. So here's what I want you guys to do. And Julie had to go to a coaching call if you heard the door close. Here's, here's your homework from today's podcast. As always, please continue to give us five-star reviews on iTunes and on Stitcher and whatever, you know, Spotify or whatever. And do please uh, subscribe to us on uh, YouTube if you're listening to the podcast and replay on YouTube. But what's most important is you absolutely get your real estate treasure map done. That is going to give you that sense of direction that a lot of you, once you have it, will feel so much better, so much clearer. I put a little survey up, <laughs> Facebook survey, right? I put a little survey up on, um, actually, maybe on YouTube. It was on YouTube, asking people if they had a their business plan done. And a vast majority, it was probably, you know, three to one, if not four to one, had no intention of doing a business plan. And I thought, well, that doesn't surprise me, but hopefully that's not you guys who listen to our podcast because you know the importance of it. And our business plan, your real estate treasure map, which will feel very personal to you once you've completed it, is your step-by-step -step success plan. Thus, the reason we call it the real estate treasure map. It does give you specific steps that you need to be taking, and it's drilled down in numbers. This isn't a woo-woo, touch-and-feely type approach to business and life. This is a factual business approach. This is something that when you lean into it and you actually do the real work that we're asking you to do as part of this uh, real estate treasure map, you're going to self-discover that your path forward and to real estate success and frankly experiencing freedom, financial freedom, is a lot shorter than you might have expected uh, because you, now you know your real numbers. And this is something that all of you, once you've experienced it the first time, you're going to all of a sudden have this veil lifted in front of, from in front of your eyes because you're going to say, well, you know what? I can see my way forward financially for the next six months, the next 12 months. And once you see that what you can accomplish, then beyond that, you're going to start thinking bigger. You're going to start expecting more from your life, and that's incredible. But you have to have that first epiphany, that first breakthrough, and that's what getting your real estate treasure map done is all about. So text the word Harris to 47372. Text the word Harris to 47372. In the meantime, again, I really sincerely, Julie and I really sincerely appreciate all the great five-star reviews on iTunes. If you've not done that yet, please do do that. Um, that is a, a very um, generous and uh, way to show appreciation for our podcast and the effort we put forward uh, into this every single day. The podcast is free. Every single podcast takes Julie and I hours to put together, not to mention the production time afterwards. And all we ask for you to do is give us a five-star review on iTunes. We certainly appreciate it. In the meantime, yes, Julie and I are with eXp Realty. Yes, Julie and I would love to talk to you about being your sponsor at eXp Realty. Yes, every single one of you need to be considering becoming eXp agents, no matter what market you're in, no matter what price range you're in. eXp is now in 21 different countries. It's the fastest modern re growing real estate company, maybe in the history of real estate. It's incredible. We'd love to talk to you about real, uh, joining us at eXp. Just text me directly at 512-758-0206. That is my real cell phone number. Do not call, text 512-758-0206. And we'll start the conversation about you uh, joining Julie and I at eXp Realty. Again, text me directly at 512-758-0206. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow.